at this point, I just don't have a single space left on my shelf. Everything is lined up double, triple, quadruple, and I've got to make some more room. So I've got all of these random AliExpress gels. And I've got an entire box of sets of Korean gels. There's probably another, I don't know, 150 or so polishes there that are still not swatched. So I have just enough space left for one more shelf. So thanks to my nail bestie, Carrie. Hello. We're gonna get this shelf up here so that I can start getting a bunch of these new polishes out and displayed and be able to figure out where they're at because I have so much to swatch still guys and nowhere to put everything. So we'll get started on that. Let's get this second one up and then we get to move polishes. That's the best part is moving polishes, yeah. Carrie. Did you know that? Yes. The very best part is moving the polishes. Okay. All the pretty colors. <laughs> Shelving is up. It looks relatively good. And so then the exciting part of moving see polishes. How worried, you see how little these guys are? Yeah. If they're back here. You're not going to see them. I'm not going to. I'm going to have to be pulling out every single one to see what they are. So I think these little guys have to stay here. These are going to be easy to move up here because they're just inks and I don't use them. I only use them for certain things, right? Maybe I should do it as like an ASMR video and just be like. Some of those ASMR videos are so gross. Like I can't even handle it. I don't it's care. I'm not being rude, I'm being real people. <laughs> you decide to keep that in. Yeah. All right, so we're coming along. So I've got my inks and then more inks and then I'm going into polishes that I don't often reach for. So they'll be up here so that I, you know, kind of up and away and I won't notice them. And then I'll start putting on my Korean gels all along here. <laughs> all right. So yeah, just going to keep at it. Keep shifting everything up and and start filling it all out. I love doing my color swatches this way. My stiletto tips. Gives you lots of room to work with for doing a mat and if you need black or white on it. And then I can hang them wherever I have those colors and it makes it easy to find. Just like that. Quick and easy to find the color I need when I want it. So I haven't managed to get a lot of my sets swatched yet, but so far I've got the SV Collection, Fiote, Aurora Queen, and D-Gel, the Sorceress Collection I already had before, the Divock Marble Fit, and then as I swatch and get the rest of them done, they will continue to fill out this shelf. And hopefully I'll have enough space for everything, so we'll have to see going forward. Down here I've shifted and opened up some more room for D&D &D because I picked up some D&D &D sheer colors to try out and see what they were like for doing nude bases. And then of course you can see massively my collection is pretty substantially Madame Glam because well their marketing is right on target <laughs> really is what a lot of it is. I do enjoy their colors. They have really fantastic quality polishes. I do appreciate that I can go online and check out Ginger Sparks's videos to see what colors 
I may or may not already have in my collection so that I'm not getting duplicates because I have so many polishes. And that has been a huge help so that generally, even though I have upwards of a thousand colors or different polishes, generally I'm not getting duplicates because I make sure to double check. And Madame Glam doesn't do a ton of specialty type polishes. They much more uh, gear towards a solid color, cream colors. So I find that if I continue getting my cream solid colors from them, then yeah, I'm not running into a lot of duplicates, which is really, really nice because there's nothing that sucks worse than getting multiple multiples of the same color polish from different brands just because it's a color that you really enjoy. So that's the main reason that I have so many Madame Glam. That and their marketing emails and deals and stuff like that just make it really hard when you're somebody like me to try and pass up. So it is what it is. I try and shut off their marketing emails now so that I don't feel so tempted and it's not something I'm buying constantly. Then I've got my Luxa Polish, which I really love their brand. And they've got some phenomenal specialty like platinum and diamond gel polishes. I don't have a lot of their solid colors. I do have a favorite. Here it is. And this is one of my only like plain solid colors. It is finesse. It is an incredible blue. And mostly I have uh, color changing glow in the dark, like fairy polishes, different specialty sets that they released, glass polishes that have pretty sparkles and such in them. And their Metallic Heist collection was really incredible. It's got a cool sheen to it. And then a lot of like diamond, platinum, glitter, sparkle type gels. Daily Charm. Pretty sure they're white label company. So I don't think that they do make their own polishes. But a lot of them are really nice and I've really enjoyed them. Magic Gel, I'm pretty sure is a Canadian brand. All I have for Magic Gel, I do use their top coat which I really like especially for stamping and I have their base these are all reflective so I bought all of their reflective collections when they came out because they were really nice and and the price was quite quite good and I really like them they're just not bright they're very muted uh, darker type colors so yeah that's the majority of my polishes and then again up here I moved up my inks so I've got all the Apre inks that they had I've got Jellico inks the Marble Queen uh I think just one of the collections that she put out some random inks from different places Wildflowers and D&D &D. and then my Ugly Duckling polishes which I don't tend to reach for very much these are just random McCart glass gels that I threw up there because whatever I didn't know where else to put them IBD, I used to use a lot when I was a nail tech, but um, their formula, their older ones and their formula is not all that great, so I don't use them too often. Same with all of these. There's like gelish and just random ones that I got on sales and, and different things when they were cheap. I don't tend to reach for them much anymore, so, so I will just stash those all up there out of the and way. And then to my desk. It is a mess. <laughs> It is not tidied up. There's a lot going on here at any given time. So on my desk, I have a carousel, which makes it really easy for all my grab things. So I stamp a lot. So I have my stampers up there. Um, Lint-free wipes, more stampers. This is one of those handy uh, curing lights, flashlights. And I've got scissors for doing different things, different random tools for for uh, stirring and, and what have you. Uh, stands for my brushes, or holders for my brushes. I throw tips in here. I throw little bits of projects that I'm working on. And then I've got a good portion of my brushes in here. So one of my pieces has, one of my holders has all my like high-end fancy brushes that I reach for the most. Then this one has kind of like garbage brushes <laughs> that I reach for to do things with. They're falling apart or just crappy quality or ones that I end up tossing. Then over here I have more brushes 
And these are the kind of garbage brushes that I reach for all the time to do things like fixing things up or, or um, when I've got glitters that I've got to move around or just different stuff. These brushes get wrecked and they, uh, they're they very cheap. A lot of them are just like dollar store brushes or Amazon brushes or just random stuff that I pick up for fixing mistakes and cleaning things up. And then I've got all kinds of lights on my table. I've got the uh, Slimline, which I really like. It's great for lighting. Phone holder on a spring, move it around kind of deal. This huge lamp that I got off of AliExpress, which I find really handy for putting all kinds of sets into to cure because it holds so much. And then my drawers, my table, I did have a manicure table when I was a tech, but I found it wasn't very suitable for uh, working on press-ons or doing content. So instead of my manicure table, I now use this uh, Ikea setup that I got and the drawers are fantastic. My top drawer holds all of my top coats, base coats, and like I have black and white in here because I constantly reach for black and white. So I have got tops and bases from tons of different companies. Like I find that certain mats, some work better for inks, certain top coats work better on top of stamping. So it really does benefit to try out different brands and see which ones work best with the particular style of art that you're doing. And then of course, <laughs> lots of them have a piece of white sticker around them because they have glitter in them or chrome or what have you and I have messed that up. So if it's not got a white sticker on it then it's safe to use for solid colors. If there's a white sticker it's only for glitters and chromes and stuff because it's full of stuff that's gonna mess it up. So then that's my top drawer. My next drawer holds my most commonly used different kinds of art inks or sorry not inks art gels so like gold and black and white and silver I've got some elastic uh, gels in there oh, crystal nails I picked these up for doing they work really well for chroming on top of and stuff they have a no wipe top coat and I've got my stamping roller to clean off my stampers and then uh, beamy I picked up some beautiful beamy leaf gels those are in here even though I don't use them very often so they don't typically need to be in here extra pack of wipes tips that designs and stuff when I do I kind of just throw them in a bag if I'm not mounting them for my case got my fake hand in the back here staying uh, lint free and dust free got extra wipes that I've cut up I typically use the blue Scott towels. They're cheap and they're good for cleanup stuff and what have you. A set of metallic watercolors that I got off of Dime Nails. So that's the second drawer. My third drawer is typically projects that I'm working on. So if I come up with an idea and I have a project and I pull my different colors and add my stickers and my what have you, so this is kind of like a working on drawer and a finished tips drawer and ideas drawer. It's a bunch of random stuff. And then I have my press on tips in here. So all of the tips that I'm currently using to do press on sets or Jellix extensions that I do for friends and family. I do those as well. I use typically a prey and painted desert are the two brands that I use and I do practice on random uh, AliExpress brand tips. And then down here I've got one of my e-files, cuticle oils and bits and some of those random tips I was telling you about that I practice on. And yeah, my case that I put my mounted designs on when I get around to it. So that one's kind of empty. Over here I have my rolling cart. It's filled with all kinds of junk. On top I keep my my drinks and my towels, the Scott towels that I cut up and paper towels if I need them. 
I use gloves in a bottle as a barrier cream because I have severe allergies to Hema and which has now been confirmed by my allergist and so I always use a barrier cream and then use a really heavy duty this is a 10 mil glove when I'm working I also have random gloves that are not 10 mil that I use for just when I'm like picking up bottles and moving things around and not necessarily working but just still protecting uh, so on my top I got just practice tips that I've tried out different ideas with I have usually hanging on here swatch sticks that I have labeled that are ready to get stuff done on them my microfiber towel for doing my chromes I wear big rubber gloves sometimes when I'm just quickly doing stuff so that again I don't get uh, allergy re reaction uh, then I've got these little dental I think they're for dental stuff and these are lipstick ones these are for doing cleanups on nails and on the bottom I just have spares of stuff for when I'm working on press-ons there's tips down there there's tape down there let's see what else yeah just crap this is a mess down here <laughs> I've got extra extra e-files for stuff I've got another e-file in here for stuff and yeah just random bits and bobs a mess that needs to be organized I have lots of those so spare stuff up there I've got my travel case for when I go somewhere and do somebody's nails this here is basically overstock this cabinet and things that I used to use when I was a tech uh, this is an Ikea unit that I got years and years ago that I stenciled to have a pretty floral design on it I don't go in there for much again a lot of stuff from being a tech that I probably should go through and get rid of but I don't do that so <laughs> then over on top a lot more mess of random things that I'm working on I'm very messy guys <laughs> or not messy but cluttered everything's cluttered so again most of the units I get are from Ikea and even the shelving that I use for my nails they're from Ikea they are the Mosslanda so these shelves from Ikea are so handy they're picture ledges and I've been using them for decades for my nail stuff and the bigger ones the Mosslanda that you can get these days are wide enough that you can actually put um, a wooden ledge inside here, a riser, so that you can rise up some of your polishes in the back so you'll be able to see them. I haven't gotten around to doing that, but it is a project that would this be nice. IKEA unit. Uh, in the top, I've got random stuff. Again, <laughs> there's all kinds of things in here. My label maker, my label tape for doing all my swatch sticks. I've got all kinds of glues in here and uh, press or glue remover tape. Just it's just random, random junk. So then down in here, I have some of my nails that I've saved. I've got my uh, manicure roulette set, uh, cases, spare cases that I have sometimes, and my a little black nail book for doing designs or coming up with the designs and working on them and other junk goes in there so then the products start here and this is my art gels so I have got uh, art gel paint from Madame Glam the regular set I've got the neon set putting gels in here got some spider gels in here Are these Barbie Mirage I think they're called random aliexpress stuff these i think are from amazon it's a 3d modeling gel and then in the back here and these are swatches for them i've got one stroke gel paints from blue amber that work really well for stamping 
that I use them for the most part. And then perhaps someday I will learn, learn to do one stroke painting, but I don't know when that'll ever happen. So then my next drawer, I have got my stickers and I just picked up two new empty books because I have a ton of stickers in here that need to be sorted and put away and organized and taken out and all that. So I'll probably end up filling up these two empty books and then these two are full. In the back here, I have a makeup palette. That is just regular makeup and that is eyeshadow that I use to do a lot of ombre stuff because it works really nicely. Those are some nice bright colors. And then brushes for when I'm doing my ombres. Uh, this here, striping tapes. Extra swatch sticks in black, white, and neutral, which I don't use very often. And these are like markers, watercolor markers. This next drawer here is stamping polishes. I've got a whole bunch that are really old from uh, Mondo de Unas in Mexico. And then I've got quite a few clear jelly stamper ones. And then I have in here spare towels, scrap towels that are cut up and ready. I find that I, I love using black, white, and the sticky polishes from Clear Jelly Stamper. Their stamping polishes are fantastic, but I don't want to have to buy every single color. So I really prefer to use gels, um, especially those one-stroke uh, painting gels because you can mix your own colors and it's much easier so you can get an assortment of colors without having to buy every single one individually and I like the ability to stamp more slowly and not have to rush before the paint dries because the stamping polish dries very quickly and so I find it frustrating to constantly be trying to beat the clock when it comes to stamping with regular stamping polish. So then my next drawer is stamping plates. And I have labeled them with these acrylic uh, little plates and my label maker so that I've got them kind of in a little bit of categories. And clear jelly stamper is fantastic for plates. I also really enjoy maniology Moe London, but I gotta say my favorite is probably Moira. So I just, I don't know, I have tons and tons of Moe that I really love and lots of clear jelly stamper and lots of really old from ones from back in the day when I used to buy Bundle Monster and Uber Cheek and all kinds of stuff. But I just find that the Moira, I don't know, I like their designs better. I like the ideas that they come up with. I like just a lot about them. So the Moiras have been my recent favorite for quite some time. Then these two drawer or this drawer with these two giant books are this one here is foils. Hundreds and hundreds of foils. And I love to store them this way. So a lot of times you get foils, especially better quality foils from, you know, bigger companies. And they're like this, which is fantastic. I love that. But this takes up way too much space for me when I have hundreds and hundreds of foils. So I could not store like dozens and dozens of these little containers. So instead I take them and I wrap them onto cards so that I can see what the foil is going to look like. And I just have a giant book full of them. So this stores, I mean, I could possibly have a thousand of them. I'm not sure. This stores so many foils without taking up all that space. So the foils never end. <laughs> they never, never end. Oh, they do end. There's the end. So yeah, lots of space for foils and it does not take up 
all the room that, uh, and it doesn't seem to damage them or cause any issue that they're, they're, uh, rolled up like that. I've never had a problem. So there's my foils. And then the next a booklet, next binder. My next binder is full of decals. So these are all water decals, not stickers, but water decals. So again, a really quick and easy way to see exactly what I want. I, of course, organize all of my booklets by theme and then by color and as much as I can anyway. And so, yeah, you have all sorts of decals to be found. And again, a lot less space taken up, much easier to organize. And then when I get to the back of my decal book, I end up with these old stickers that I've had for ages that I don't typically use a lot, but once in a while, once in a while, there's something that they're good for. And then at the very back of this booklet is... Uh, what are these pigments? So these are just Amazon pigments and they work fantastic. I think I got at some point a kit of, I want to say like 60 different pigment colors or something. These are not chromes. They don't have that shiny chrome effect, but they're pigments. They look beautiful on stuff. They are not, they were not specifically for nails or anything like that. They are just color pigments and they do amazing stuff for ombres and that. So, yeah, so that's those two books. And then just, I have a color chart and such in there. A couple of colored wheels, actually, for ideas for when I get stuck with a color. And my last draw, I think, is, yeah, just uh, kind of junk. <laughs> it's overstock stuff. I think I have uh, tape glue inside here. I have, like massive packs of like wholesale stickers that I got, um, extra files, extra brushes. I've got Sharpie markers in the back there that I used to use for doing alcohol ink stuff. And yeah, so that's just kind of junk. And that's the last drawer in this unit. So then of course here, oh, these are the Korean gel sets and stuff from my hauls that I still have to swatch and do videos and such for. And here on this unit, again, <laughs> sorry, it's a mess. I, this is my planner that I use for my ideas and what my new videos are gonna be coming up with. This basket is AliExpress and little bits of random things that still need to be swatched, reviewed looked over, stuff like that. This <laughs> is random files and stuff that I grab for next. It's got my next uh, crappy brushes and stuff to grab when the ones that are on my table kind of run out or, or get used up and are no good anymore. Um, just baskets of tips and things I'm working on. These are my cards for my press-ons. Uh, this goes back into this box because it still has to be reviewed. This is a bag that I did a, a nail shop at my local nail shop that I go to in Toronto um, and picked up a bunch of stuff. So that'll have to be swatched and hauled and reviewed and all that. Uh, this was this was a Halloween set that I had planned that was going to be so cute with these little stickers and yep, yeah, that didn't happen. Halloween is way past, <laughs> months past, and it's still there because I still really love that idea and want to do it and found the perfect polishes to match, but not just yet. Okay, so my last unit here, again, another Ikea unit. I think they're all called the Alex drawer system or something. And this is a really low one with really small shelves, which is, or really small shallow drawers, which is, ideal for a nail stuff. So top one, we've got glitters. Lots and lots and lots of glitters. I love glitters. I don't use them nearly enough, but I absolutely love them. So I get them from all over the place and I generally put them, if they don't already come in little pots like this, I will put them into here and label them by color or organize them by color. So we got glitters and the next drawer, we got more glitter. <laughs> so 
These are glitters from Luxa Polish, which are very expensive, but I got to say some of them are phenomenal and some of them are, I have found at least with their pixie glitters, I have been finding, having a hard time finding a like duplicate kind of idea on Amazon or anywhere. So those ones I would recommend. The flash ones though, um, you can find those cheap all over the place. Other colors, these are all my Luxas. These are all like glow in the dark or iridescent type ones like that. So these I've gotten all over the place. Mostly just Amazon, Sheen, Timu, AliExpress, all that kind of stuff. You got your typical hearts and stars and leaves and there's a few different mixes in here. And then for my next drawer, still more glitter. <laughs> These are Amazon glitters. There's some super fine, plain colored Amazon glitters in the back that I typically only pull out to mix with something else. Uh, these Laza, I think they're called Laza, um, they were some really nice sets off Amazon. They've got some really cool color shifting ones and, and chameleon ones and such like that. Uh, yeah, more things like flakes. Lots of flakes. I have got flocking powder for doing fuzzies and foils. Um, foil, like different kind of uh, leaf. Chromes next and pigments. So this one here is a set of chromes mostly that I got off of Amazon. Then I've got black and white like pigment powder. I've got some random chromes and my chrome applicators. All sorts of more chromes. From you name it, AliExpress and Born Pretty, Sheen and Timu, and all of them are really quite good. I have yet to find too many that end up being, you know, too crappy. And then in the back here, this is someday I'm going to do mood. Is it powder? Yeah. Someday I'm going to do mood nails. <laughs> Be able to use that fluorescent pigment powders, more fluorescent pigment powders. Some work well, some don't. Like this set does not work well. It would work well if it was mixed, say, with acrylics or something, but as a pigment powder, it does not work well. It's very, very faint. It doesn't really quite, it's a different um, formula. It's not really meant for that. And then this basket over here. And these are all just dollar store baskets and stuff that work really well in these drawers. Uh, this is eyeshadow palette. It works really well. And more pigment powders. More chromes. We've got gold leaf and different colored leaf stuff. I tried out liquid chromes and I was not impressed with them very well. Then I've got quite a few uh, Luxa flakes. And flakes from other different companies. I've also got lots of Luxa chromes that I like. But I do find that many of them are no different than other brands that you find. Amazon and where have you. So, that one. And I use chromes and flakes and such all the time. I love, love, love using them. chromes, flakes, pigments, you name it. So that's all in that drawer. And then the next one, we start getting into crystals and gems and charms. All kinds of stuff. So in this basket here, I have got random stuff in these little things that you can get off Amazon and everywhere else. So lots of little caviar beads and gems and little metal uh, charms, I guess, metal pieces, bars. I've got frames, pretty, pretty little pictures, <laughs> little Fimo things. So these are all just all kinds of stuff like that. 
this basket here is basically crystals. I've got some Swarovskis, not that many. Most of them come from uh, Amazon, AliExpress, mostly the cheaper places. All these little kits. And then this one here. I've got all different kinds of colors of caviar beads and lots of little studs, colored studs for using for different things. More different shapes and sizes of colored studs, studs, studs. Flowers, dried flowers. More types of dried flowers and more and more and more. Lots of dried flowers. Oh, then then I'm getting into uh, opal mica chips. And this is lace, laser lace. I've got some more kind of laser string stuff over here. And just little containers of random bits. More crystals. These ones here are, for the most part, Swarovskis. So I've got little packs of Swarovskis that I'd gotten. And they're in each of these. They're labeled. They have, like, color themes and idea themes and stuff like that. So that's back when I was buying Swarovskis when they were allowed. <laughs> so all kinds of little bits in there. Then these are all pearls, I believe. Oh, no, pearls and chains. So different shapes of pearls. Some are round, some are flat, or flat-backed. And then these are chains to try out. Different styles of chains. I've got them in silver and gold. i got this leaf, gold leafing stuff everywhere. More bits of opal mica stuff. This is gold leaf as well. It's just, this is just from the dollar store and underneath it's in sheets. And every now and then I pull out a sheet and I shove it into one of these containers when I run out. So then these are phenomenal little containers that probably Amazon or Ali or one of those places. They are one section that you can pull out. And so I try and put like similar things together. So these are all little charms. And these ones are all like moon and stars and planets and stuff like that in there. This one is Halloween type of theme. So there's spiders and bats and skulls and stuff like that. So that when I'm working on a project... I can pull out the case and then pull out the section and be like, okay, I'm not sure what I'm going to use, but it's going to be something somewhere in here. So all kinds of different charms and goodies. And I try to do them, like I said, in theme sets. So this one is all different color, more rhinestones. And this one is uh, different uh, random... I think I've got some of those, yeah. Some of these sets with the flowers, which I really like. These are really handy, but you do run out of the actual flower pretty quick. Um, and then, like, these are all glow in the dark. Those, they're not, I don't think they're hot fix, but they're just uh, gems. And this one's all flowers, those three dimensional. Different kinds of, yeah, big 3D flowers. A few leftover crystals. Rhinestones on strings. So that you can have a continuous string. And then different colored chains. Maybe you can see it better like this. 
can get the idea. So you can do numerous things with these. You can open them up and just take out the crystal that's in them and not use the chain part at all. Uh, you can use the full chain and do different designs with them. And they are really cheap, like really cheap on, on AliExpress. I think I got big rolls of them. So you get a lot when you're buying them. And you may find that you're definitely not going to use all that much. So do it with a friend. <laughs> find somebody to uh, split them with and, you know, buy a few rolls in a few different colors and try it out. So you may find that they go really far. And then I'm pretty sure my last drawer is not a whole lot of anything. It's just... Oh, there's two more drawers. What's this next one? Oh, I think there are two drawers of junk. <laughs> so, yeah. So I've got extras in here uh, for all kinds of stuff. See, here's a lot of those had tons and tons of them in there. So lots of the extra chains that I ended up with. Extra containers for filling everything. Uh, extra top coats and base coats and brushes. And probably the same thing down below. Yeah, more lint wipes, more sponges, stuff for my stamping to remove. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you enjoyed checking out my space. And as always, don't forget to love your nails. <laughs>